Uh, it's a great honor and uh, privilege to be here because I have a few interesting stories to share. First, let me begin with uh, thanking the uh, DAV College Committee uh, President, uh, Dr. Punam Suriji, and also the uh, President of Hansraj College Committee, Sri Prabhut Mahajanji. And uh, I would also like to congratulate all the alumni who received uh, the Gorab Saman and, uh, and also all the faculty members who have committed their life for the education of children and also the non-faculty members behind the scene of the how schools are run. They are the ones who are working hard on a daily basis. So I just want to congratulate them and thank them from the bottom of my heart. And for me to be here and to receive the award means a lot because this reflects the generosity of Hans Raj College because I was not necessarily a good student. Uh, my attendance was also low, so I have to accept the award with humility because uh, you know, I cannot escape. If I tell any other story, that won't be justice because Principal Uberoji is here. Uh, on my third year, I had to go to his office and uh, request a special permission because my attendance at first, first year was bad, second year was worse, and third year was terribly bad. <laughs> so he was telling me, how can you sit for exam because your attendance is so poor? And I said, sir, you know, I was uh, working for the Tibetan course, and if you could give me an exception. So he gave me the exception, so I sat for the exam, and my result was also, because I'm quite humble accepting this award, because my result was also equally bad. I got third division <laughs> in Hansaraj College. Having said that, today I confess the secret because if you check my attendance at Chanakya Police Station, which is next to Chinese Embassy, if you combine the two attendance, then my attendance was 100%. <laughs> so I was not bunking classes to go to movie hall because, movie, because I was uh, living next, uh, right here in Mukherjee Nagar, next to a movie hall. So at 11 p.m. only I could sleep because you have to wait till the ending of the movie because the sound was so strong. So when you hear dishum, 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 I said me making my bed and go to bed. So I used to get free movies, but I must confess my attendance was bad, but for cause, but for Tibetan cause. And I'm also embarrassed because, uh, and humbled because some of my professors who taught uh, English literature are here, who got award. In my classes, uh, the, you know, Shakespeare, to be or not to be was always in my head. <laughs> to be in the class or not to be in the class. Or to be in the class or to be at Chanyakapuri police station was in my head. So I hardly spoke in class. Uh, but uh, I feel very privileged that they felt the honor to, you know, they felt the need that I come here and accept this award on the second year of the foundation day. So that's why when I got the call, I came yesterday and I made sure today I attend the whole session from the beginning till the end, so I have the perfect attendance. <laughs> so I can gladly say I was the first guest to come, and I'll be the last one to leave, so they, no one will be in doubt that his attendance was always good. So the fact that I'm speaking English also, I just want to uh, share with my English uh, professors that I could speak, uh, even though I didn't speak much in the class. Now, when I came from, you know, I was born and brought up in a village, in a basti between Darjeeling and Kalimpong. It was so remote, it's called Lamada Basti. If you want to go to Darjeeling town, you had to take three or four jeeps or Land Rover in the morning from 7 to 8.30. If you miss those, you have to come back home and go next day. So I used to spend my winter vacation cutting grass for cows. I cleaned cow dungs, cutting wood for home. So I went to Tibet refugee school. So dalbad we used to get every day for dinner was only name. It was rice from Russian. So you have to chew on one side and spit the stone from the other side, you know. And the dumpling and the curry we used to get is not from the dumpling that you get in, you know, uh, Chinese restaurants or Tibetan restaurants or curry you get in the Indian curry. 
because the dumpling was so dark and hard, if you throw it, it bounces higher. <laughs> so that's the only one which proves Newton's law, Newton's third law wrong was our school dumpling. So from that background, from the jungle of Darjeeling, I came to jungle of buildings here. But just to let my students know, I was very hardworking my, from a humble background. So my parents didn't have money to send me to Delhi University. My parents said, no, we don't have money to spend. So I said, OK, I'll go to Kathmandu, Nepal, and uh, beg some money from my uncle and borrow some money from neighbors. So I did business between Kathmandu and Delhi to pay for my tuition fees here. With all the home ministers sitting here and IPS officers here, I must label that business semi-legal, <laughs> lest I get arrested today, you know. <laughs> so I did business, and then the, you know, I'm sure you have been to Majdu Gatila or Bud Bihar, where you buy jeans, pan, all that. I used to be one of the suppliers. So I bought those, sold, made money, got my admission here. So today is also an auspicious coincidence, because that was in 1988. That's exactly 30 years ago. At this time of the year, when you all got admission, I was from West Bengal board, so our result was late. I was still running around. The classes were going on. I was not admitted. So when they gave me the form that I filed, that I uh, filled uh, during those days, reminds me of those days when I was chakkar marte, chakkar marte jati the. So finally, I got admitted uh, at Hans Raj. But then, I must say, this is a challenge to all the students. A third division student with so less attendance can become president of Tibetan people. Expectation of all you are much higher. <laughs> so fortunately, uh, I got admitted to Faculty of Law, uh, Campus Law Center. Then I got Fulbright Scholarship. So I became a good student. So then uh, I went to Harvard Law School to do my master's degree. And then I did my doctorate degree, which I completed in 2004. And then I was appointed as a fellow and then promoted as a senior fellow at Harvard Law School itself. So altogether, I spent 16 years at Harvard University. And then in 2011, I was happily working there. In 2011, there was an election for the position of uh, Kalun Tripa or prime minister. Then I ran for the position. Now, can you imagine there were like six candidates? And I was the youngest, least experienced candidate. Other candidates were former prime minister, speaker of the parliament, deputy speaker, senior most minister, and decade-old long personal secretary of Dalai Lama. They were the candidates. And I was the least known, youngest, never worked a day in administration, I was a Youth Congress Five branch, never worked as prime, uh, the administration or a member of parliament, nothing. I just went for the top position. A friend of mine told me, I worked in the administration for 20 years. I'm still hesitating to run for a member of parliament. Now you have zero experience. You're going straight for the top post. And I said, that's the difference, my friend. You hesitate, I don't. Because... Because, again, this is not the Tibetan administration is not administration and politics per se. I think during all those days, I thought, I, now I can justify. I was fulfilling my academic requirement here at Hans Raj as part of the college. When I went to Chanakya Puri police station, I think I was fulfilling the spirit of Mahatma Hans Raj. He was a freedom fighter. So I was fulfilling the spirit of Indian freedom fighters by going there and doing something for a cause. Because all my teachers say, be good, do something for a cause. Do something for have-nots. Do something for underdog. And I was doing it by going in front of Chinese embassy on a daily basis. So in 2011, I was the least known. But then I won the election. It was an impossible. Even my mother did not believe. Mother loves you the most especially their sons. But still, mother did not believe that I would win the election, but I won the election. Now, for this, I want to thank Hans Raj, because while I was here in, for three years, Hans Raj gave me the passion and the freedom to do the things that I wanted to do for the Tibetan cause. 
So uh, recently in 2016, I won the re-election. And I was wondering, I won the re-election. There could be a reason why. And today I found the reason also. Because this is the second year the Foundation Day started here. So last year, after I won the election, this is the award I was supposed to get. Had I lo lost the election, I don't think I would have been invited here. So I'm thankful that I got re-elected last year, and I'm standing in front of you today. So I just want to uh, share with you all that you know, today's award, in some ways, uh, re reflects the generosity of Hans Rush College. At a bigger level, this reflects the generosity of India, this great country. Because no other country has done for Tibetan people, His Holiness Dalai Lama, and, and the Tibetan cause, than this great government and people of India. Because the largest number of Tibetan population is in India, Tibetan administration is based in India, and His Holiness Dalai Lama himself says he is the longest guest of India for the last 58 years. And also, we follow the Gandhian principle of ahimsa. And we also follow Indian democracy in our parliament. And if you come to Dharamsala, you all are invited. Most of the present leaders in the Tibetan administration were born, brought up, and educated in India. Now, why I say this is, now, Kiran Rijuji, Honorable Minister, is here. Modi Sarkar is talking a lot about making India. But I just want to remind you all, the original made in India is the Tibetan movement. Because leaders are born and brought up in India. We follow Gandhian notion of ahimsa. We follow Indian democracy. You all educated us and told us, be somebody. So we followed all that. It's all made in India. So we are the original made in India. <laughs> Hence, we have to succeed. If you succeed, India succeeds. Fail, to honey nahi chahita. Yeah, I was a poor student, but I didn't fail. Third division passed the whole year, nah. So Tibetan freedom movement will also pass. That much I know. So when the day comes, and the day will come surely, history will be written. The whole history will be written. History of Asia will be written. And history of India will be written. In the Tibetan history, it will mention that because of this great country, India, because of this generous people of India, because of this supportive help rendered by all the Indian governments have made make in India the free Tibetan freedom movement a success. That success will be also a success of Indian ahimsa, Indian democracy, Indian education. So that day will come, that we will be part of the same history. Now, I just want to end because uh, with to all the students also, if you look around, the world itself is becoming more complex. In 1990s, especially after the Cold War, the collapse of Soviet Union, internationalism and liberalism was on the rise. Fukuyama, end of history, was the prevalent mindset. It was true. Democracy was a big thing. Human rights was a big thing. Environmental rights was a big thing. Everybody accepted liberal, liberalism and internationalism is the way to go. United Nations, European Union, and the BRICS, and you, you name all the international mechanisms. But now, in recent years, the world is becoming more complex. In, in, in place of internationalism, there is rise of ultranationalism. In place of you know, liberalism, there is rise of extremism. You just look at IS, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, terrorism around the world. So hence, those good old days when we were at college here, rise of national, uh, liberalism and internationalism, that's the, that was the wave. Now the wave has become more complex. There's a challenge to it. And you all are entering that complex world. And where do you fit in is the question. In that context, what you also see is rise of China. 
Now, I just recently, veteran uh, Indian leader and former defense minister, Mulan Singh Yadav, said India's no, number one challenge is China. Before, Defense Minister George Fernandez also said India's number one challenge is China. And now what you see in Doklam, in uh, bordering Sikkim and uh, Bhutan, that is also a challenge in front of us. As a Tibetan, I can share this, what you see in Doklam is a symptom. Because Mao Zedong has said in the 1950s, we occupy Tibet, we have to occupy Tibet, because Tibet is the palm. And the five fingers are Sikkim, Bhutan, Nepal, Arunachal Pradesh, and Ladakh. These are the five fingers. Once we get the palm, Tibet, we will extend ourselves to five fingers. This was said in 1950s. And what you see now in Doklam is part of that action. So hence, this is a challenge for India as well. And what you see in China is the Confucius-based nationalism on the rise. And then the, their foreign policy has this expansionist design from South China Sea to East China Sea to Scarborough Island to all the neighboring countries, including India. This is the challenge you all are facing. And globally, rise of ultranationalism and extremism is the challenge. Now, what can one do? There's a lot of talk about how can India be number one? How can we confront all these challenges that we're facing ideologically and as a superpower? And a lot of discourse in India is much about last 70 years. I know Hans Raj is celebrating 70th anniversary, which is a good thing. But a lot of discourse in the Indian media and the intellig intelligence here is about 70 years since independence of India. I respect that argument, but I beg to differ a little bit. I think we should not simply talk about 70 years. That makes India so young, so new, so small, so recent. And the other discourse that's going on is 700, 700 years of colonialism, you know, under British, under Mughal. And then that discourse of 700 years of colonialism again puts the Indian mindset as a victim. We suffered, we were humiliated. Then the victim mindset either comes in the form of vengeance or in the form of inferior complex. Rather, the discourse should be pre-700 years, and we should visit from 2nd, 3rd century to 13th century when India was number one civilization in the world, number one economy in the world, number one trade in the world, number one culture in the world. India was already number one for more than 1,000 years. If you revisit that 1,000 years, the mindset you will get is, we were number one for 1,000 years. We can be number one. We should be number one rather than can we or can we not in 70 years. Now, if you visit that 1,000 years from 2nd, 3rd to uh, 13th century, what you see is that those were the days of Nalanda Mahavira, Takshashila Mahavira. Those were the days of Gupta dynasty, Ashoka dynasty, Kanishka dynasty. Those were the days where Buddhism was prevalent, accepted in India. And the number one export of India to the whole world, I would say the cheapest, where GST does not apply, and also export-import duty all doesn't apply, is Buddhism. If you look at in Asia, there are 14 countries in Asia who are Buddhist. There are 52 countries where their major portion of population are Buddhist. So that's why, as Honorable Minister Kiran Rijiji said, the highest priest of Thailand was saying, India should lead us. Why are they are saying all these Buddhist countries? Because if you read Buddhist scriptures, the pages, even the Tibetan pages, first starts with Om, Yagar Kedu, in Indian language. Then there is a sentence in Sanskrit. Anyone who reads a Buddhist scripture first pays homage to India as a guru, as a land of spirituality, 
as a land where the blessings will come, as the land of light that we lighted today. This is the respect that India has from around the world. And India simply has to assert the thousand years and assert Buddhism as the biggest exporter, longest sustaining export ever. And then whole world, these countries, see India as automatic number one. So India has to revisit the thousand years and pick the low-hanging fruits. All these Buddhist countries, countries around the world, as looking at India for a guide. Because there is a challenge. China says there can be development without democracy. And India says there has to be development with democracy. These two models are competing. And India's model of unity in diversity and ahimsa is the better model. And all you need to do is pick those low-hanging fruits, and India will be automatically number one in the whole world. So that's my prayer. When India becomes that status, which already is, then I think the Make in India, the slogan of Modi Sarkar will also succeed because original Made in India of the Tibetan Freedom Movement will also succeed with that. So with that note, I want to thank all of you for coming to attend this event. I know most of you are missing your classes, and I hope the faculty members and principal won't deduct any marks for that. And all the alumni who are here, we all are very proud to be Hans Raj. Even though my attendance was 100% if you combine Chennai Puri Police Station and my English class, uh, but then the passion that I got here at Hans Raj, passion for Tibetan cause, the freedom struggle. So this is the place, the passion for my cause happened. And this is the place which allowed me, give me the time and the space to do things I wanted to do. So for which I want to thank Principal Uberoji for letting me sit for my exam. Had I not sat for the exam, I would have failed or I would have not completed my degree. Then that could have been a major obstacle for me in my life. And all the faculty members, despite their absence, they were very nice. They were very supportive. I just want to thank all of you. And all the students, and your future is bright. Getting into Hans Raj is not that easy. It's part of the DAB family and which is already uh, number one in the world. Now, from what I hear, SRCC became number one simply because they had swimming pool. By next year, there will be swimming pool. So Hans Raj will be on his way to be number one in commerce stream. <laughs> and I also pass on the message to Honorable Minister uh, Rijuji that they are also looking for a girls hostel where girls from Northeast will have special quarter, and he was nodding, which I think as a minister, good, he's going to do it, hopefully. <laughs> he's thinking about it. And uh, to all the you know, uh, non-teaching members also, you know, I have many friends at Kenti and other places. Because of you, you keep the cleanliness and everything going uh, here at Hans Raj. And because of your hard work, we become who we are. So, you know, this is a day of great honor and privilege for me that even a, a what do you call, third division student with very less attendance can get a honor here at Hans Raj. That reflects how generous you are, for which I remain eternally grateful. And I, there are so many Tibetan students who are continuing that legacy. And, but advice to you all is to be or not to be. Be in the class less outside. That would be my advice. I wouldn't be telling them, be more outside and less inside. Study hard, be good, and you all will succeed. Thank you very much.